All right, here we are. I got the transmission dipstick tube seal. That's a rubber seal that uh, it's actually for a Chevy. It's a Dorman part. I will uh, attempt to put the Dorman part number in the uh, description if I so choose at the end of the thing and I can find the box from it. So I kept my little retainer hickey. Now I cut the dipstick tube a little short. See, this is all the longer it is now. And I cut the dipstick short. It's a little bit longer than that. What we need to do is make the dipstick come out the end of here right on about seven eighths of an inch or thereabout. It doesn't have to be precise, but about that much. And then on this end, we need to weld the dipstick together with the top piece. Um, wherever it went. Oh, here it is. Somebody moved it. People come in here and play with things sometimes there. So I'm going to weld this. Looks like it goes into a metal piece before it hits plastic, so it should be okay. I'm going to weld this little tab hickey onto this here. I need to cut this a little bit shorter though. I need to cut this about half an inch shorter and then weld them together. And that is what we shall do. But not on top of this. This is actually something that I got uh, that was being disposed of. So I picked it up. It works and I'm going to try to trade it for something useful. All right, see you in the garage. All right, here we are back in the garage. I'm going to hitch up the welder and the uh, wire welder. That's my Harbor Freight converted to DC wire welder. All right, you stick us on uh, this. I need a new clamp for the groundage because uh, this thing's starting to lose uh, springitation here. Eh, close enough. Alright, let's see if I can set my pants on fire. Um, well, I guess we're going to need to plug it in. That will probably be conducive. Okay, unplug it. I need to set it on low. This is thin junk, so we got to set her on slow feed rate. It's already set there, that's good. Turn it on, I suppose. Nope, that's not on. That's thing. There we go. That's my big ass exhaust fan on the back of there. All right. So basically, what I should have to do just sort of give her a zap along there, and then flip it over and give her a zap along the other side. And that's metal, so that should zap in without mounting too bad. Well, preferably without mounting at all. Guess you better get a helmet. Yeah, I better push the button to make sure this is on. Yep, we're good. Alright. There ain't no biting spiders in there anyway. Barking spiders maybe, but not the biting ones. Those those aren't very much fun. Alright, I got my typical you can't hear me over the fan amount of audio. Let's see if this thing will even weld. Without screwing anything up too badly. We're going to kind of put it a little bit sideways. Alright, nice on it. Nice on it. 
Mine sure did. This. There's a hit. My auto darkening is not automatically darkening. I think my battery is dead. The hills off the side of here. Oh, here we go. Whoop. Well, oh, I melted the end off the dumb thing. Ouch, that's hot for some reason. I couldn't imagine why. Alright, so you can't use that much heat. We'll have to use less heat. 16 people out there saying, fewer! No, less. Alright, you stick like that. All right, we do this, and she'll kind of spring over like that. There we go. All right. Get some nice hot beads down my socks. That'll be good. Oops. Alright, that kind of stuck on there. Boy, that's ugly. Boy, howdy. I'll tell you, foot. Let's see if I can blow up my camera here, too. Well, I think that'll work. Little wire stick off of here. Yeah. Okay, I can't pull it apart. That's hideous. I'm probably gonna have to grind on it a little bit, but uh, it is together. Let's zap the other side right quick. Oops. Put the ground back on it. Barely. It'll yeah, be all right. Whoop! That was a terrible weld. Don't tell any of the real welders I did that. Alright, now, if I go get the dipstick tube, I mean, technically it's adhered, you know, a little bits and pieces off of here. One dipstick tube, and one dipstick, comma, shortened. Alright, that goes in there, and that goes right down, uh, a little past the line. I guess it'll be alright. If it bottoms out, I'll just stick it up higher out of the thing. Because we got a little ways to go up out of here. It'll be alright. 
Now, I'm wondering, should I or should I not put a coating of gray silicone on gray RTV on this thing? Because I don't want it to leak. And it looks like somebody did that before. So they probably didn't want it to leak either. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Get some ultra black or ultra gray or whatever and just stick it on there. And then shove this back up in and stick some on there. And then shove it in the hole. And bolt that down and then we'll be done with that. And then, I, well, i got to make sure this is going to fit down in. That would be kind of stupid if it didn't. I kind of measured it so it would, but I'm not sure still if it will. I could probably bend this straight if I need it. Well, actually, eh, we'll do it if we have to. Alright, off to the car. Well, here we are back at the car. I'm going to go shove my thing in the hole and see what happens. Now I'm hoping that when I put this in here, I've got enough room to access the dipstick. Hopefully I never have to use it because the transmission won't leak. Because I will have put it back together correctly, but just in case. Well, that's everything is in the way. That's good. Yeah. Take this out of the way. Take this out of the way. This over here maybe. Alright. No, you can't really see that, but I can't see what I'm doing either, so that's that makes us even. Alright, so put this down hard. I mean, the thing came like this from the factory, so it's not like... The only thing we got to worry about is just bending it around the, the extra car stuff that wasn't there when this thing was in a giant-ass giant van. Um, I think, though, that if we smack that down in there, that should just go in. Now why isn't it? Huh. What the screw? Hmm. Like the place it was bolted to before, it won't attach to it anymore. Unless it's got to go out like this, way out like this. Oh. Well, we might end up doing some things to this we're not real proud of before this is over. How is this not... Or is it just bent? Yeah, hang on. I'll go bend it back. Try to straighten it out a little bit. It's a little too curvy. Yeah, I'll be back. All right, just went inside, cut some stuff off, and got some bending and flexing and crap, and it should fit down in there now. I think our, uh, whoops, oh yeah, it fits all the way down in there now, don't it? Whoops. Anyways, uh, this not being in a van anymore is kind of a little bit different of a setup, and uh, it's presenting a couple of challenges, but I think we're, oh, there we go, cool, she goes right in. Perfect. It's a little close to the exhaust manifold, but I can put over here, it's kind of close, but I can weld a little bracket onto this tube and bolt it to the strut tower that used to be, but now it's not a strut tower anymore. And uh, that'll be that. Okay, cool. So now what I want to do, actually I might just be able to push this, shove it right in. Let's, uh, I'm going to go her up here and first thing we'll do is rotate the camera. Oh, I think I've, uh, I'm taping these or filming these out of order, but uh, I got my little spigot thing for the radiator there. So, and the hood still shuts with that on there. I'm going to have to figure out a way to keep this away from the the belt, but I think if I put a 90 degree inch and a quarter bend on there, she'll be okay. Or just put a strap around it or something, I don't know. Let's figure something out though, because I don't my radiator hose hitting the belt like it does in the Dakota. 
All right, so first things are first. We're going to smooth this thing up. And we're going to put the gunk around the, this piece first. And then we're going to glue the... Uh, I don't want to get this stuff all over my fingers. It feels disgusting. Where is... Oh, blue shop rags. They're blue. They're rags, and they're in the shop. Okay, I have recovered my blue shop rags from their captors. I'm going to use my blue shop rags to go up the thing. Schmoo it up. Because I hate silicone on my fingers because it never all it never comes off all the way. It's gonna be on there for like a week and it's this nasty greasy crap feeling on there and I just screw that. We're gonna use a rag. I mean, grease I can deal with. It's grease you can, like axle or uh, bearing grease and stuff, you can just wipe it right off. But this stuff, RTV, silicone, you know, whatever you want to call it. All right, so we're going to stick this hair rubber on the end of there. And she'll just go right on. That's glued on. Wipe the excess off because I'm not a complete psychopath. And what we'll do. I'd hate to be the next guy, but actually I already was the next guy, and it wasn't that hard to pull out even with the glue on it. The schmoo. Um, oh, I could just put it on now, couldn't I? Well, I think what I'll do is I'll stick it through from the top, and I'll lay down underneath it, and I will uh, actually... Oops, don't get your damn shirt in that stuff. That'll never come out of that. All right. Get the schmoo in there. Put her down in the hole. If I have to, I can make some adjustments to the dipstick tube length as I work, too. That's not too awfully bad. <laughs> okay. That's good. Rotate the camera unit so it goes over here. I gotta get a camera holder person. I gotta get her back up here. A hey, camera holder person, if you can hear this, uh, come to work. <coughs> need some work for you up here. Uh, that should do it. That looks like me. All right. Hopefully that does do it. Um, I'm gonna take this paper towel full of schmoo, and uh, I'm gonna use the rest of this stuff to coat the outside of that. some rough folks there but uh, that's where I live we, we pretty much all worked and it was disgusting to see that these kids go around vandalizing cars in the middle of the night and you wake up and you got a parking lot with every car with one flat tire 
like the right front tire on every vehicle in that whole parking lot was flat. That little asshole stayed out all night letting the air out of people's tires. And I had to go to work in the morning and they threw a fit because If you value your employees, you'll pay them enough to where they don't have to live in a shithole neighborhood. Well, it's really the, na the neighborhood wasn't that bad. I mean, I would live there if it wasn't for the fact that it was an apartment and I had to tiptoe around. Just, I didn't, like the neighbor never really complained. She was a nice lady downstairs, but I didn't want to annoy her because she was nice. <laughs> and I don't want all the nice people to move out. Because usually when everybody nice moves out, that means you got yourself a Youngstown. We kind of made ourselves a little miniature boardman up in Youngstown. We had that old neighborhood watch going. I had, <laughs> it was kind of funny. Everybody always tried to park where, uh, the apartments had windows sticking out both sides of the building. And they had one window on the east side of the building and one window on the west side of the building. And uh, so I put, these two little cameras with a little blue light on each one. And each one of my windows sticking out each, each side of the building. And then, because my BMW that I bought for two or three hundred dollars got stolen. And uh, to this day I'm still not sure what happened. I know the crooked people didn't want to write it report it as stolen. I couldn't collect insurance on it because they said it was towed. I said yes, after it was stolen. So let's let's put that in the report now. They didn't want to do it right. I wish I had the money to get a lawyer. I, I would have run them through the cleaners, but uh, that irritated the hell out of me. So it was either the crooked wrecker stole my BMW right out of my parking spot with a six-day-old temp tag on it, or somebody stole it, ditched it, and then they towed it. Oh, well, it was towed, not stolen. Well, yeah, what happened to it? Uh, when somebody who wasn't me drove off with it, and then, well, I guess you're allowed to do that kind of stuff in the city now. <laughs> we don't have crime statutes anymore. You just kind of do whatever. Haha, uh -huh, sucks to be you. All right, that feels like it's in. Now I'm going to push from the top a little more. So that was when I moved out of Youngstown. Because that cost me a bunch of money to get the car back. Because the insurance wouldn't pay a dime for it because, well, it was towed, not stolen. Because <laughs> the police wouldn't report it correctly to keep their crime stats down, apparently. And, uh, Oh, what a mess. Boy, I hate that. Bunch of damn crooks. Man. Just leave people's stuff alone. Like it's legally parked in my parking spot. Get away from it and go take somebody else's thing. Maybe they thought it was going to be an easy mark because it was a, a BMW in a rough part of town, so it was a drug dealer with warrants or something. They could pick somebody up, but no. I'm not a drug dealer. I don't do drugs. I don't do warrants. I don't go around doing stupid things on purpose. Well, that should do it, I think. Doesn't quite feel like it's seated all the way, but let's pull up on it and see if it. Yeah? It doesn't immediately come out when you pull up on it. Alright, let's push a little harder. See if we can break something. Yeah! No, well, it's in there. It's, uh, there it be. Let's prop this up against something to make sure it doesn't do anything dumb. All right, there we go. So now I guess uh, I'm done bitching about Youngstown. I'm gonna bitch about Youngstown and put the transmission pan back on her. Figure maybe a few hours from now, once this sets fully. Um, We'll go ahead and fill her up. Now that everything says that it's supposed to be full of uh, 
uh, ATF plus four, but it's the same transmission as the old one, and I like using Ford Type F fluid in these because it gives you firmer shifts in it. it uh, at least as far as I've known, it, it makes the transmission wear out less. So I use, I'll probably put like about a third to a half Type F in there, and the rest of it plus four. They've got different friction additives. You can mix them a little bit, and uh, it's like Dexron three and Type F. I used to mix in the other one. And it worked really good. You just basically you mix, you keep adding type F into it and diluting the other stuff that's in there until you get shifts as firm as you want them. And then that's it. Just kind of count how many gallons you use to each one. Uh, silicone crap is going to be on my fingers right here. Oh well. All right, let's go get the gasket to the pan. And the bolts, which I, I watched the, the video taking it apart, so I know where they are. The bolts for this pan are as follows, and I quote, they are atop the magnetic tool retention bar. Okay. Oh, that's the motor guy already. It's like five something in the morning or six in the morning. You guys don't mess around. The other thing I need is, uh, what do you call the people that rig the lights on a, a filming crew? I don't know, but uh, the gaffer or something, what, it, or the electrician or something, I don't know. Anyways, uh, so I think the camera person's also going to be in charge of rigging the lights. Because uh, I can dual purpose my camera person. I think she's pretty good at it. Hey, camera person, uh, come on up to work when you get a chance. I need a camera person to do work. Yeah, there's the pan. Stick the schmoo on the pan. Oh yeah, you can tell. I mean, this has only got 70 some thousand miles on it, but somebody has already changed the transmission gasket and everything. The, the uh, what you call it? Um, the, uh, the filter's still super clean, so I'm just gonna leave it in there because it's not that old. Hey, we'll do this a little bit different. We'll kind of lay a sort of a bead on here and just kind of sort of go around it with a paper towel just to smooth it up. You don't really need this sealer on here, I don't think, but I'm just putting it on just to hold the gasket to the pan. It doesn't have to be sealed per... Yeah, to hold the gasket to the pan. I'm going to try to line the holes up and then Oh, always squeeze from the middle. Don't squeeze from the ends. That's loser talk. All right, that's good. Don't forget, kids. Squeeze from the middle, not the end. our schmoo releasing end here. Hmm. You don't want to get a bunch of this 
sticking out the edges either because you'll end up ruining the transmission because it'll get stuck in all the passages. Just like the engine oil. You don't want to have this stuff in your oil either. You just want to have enough of it to stick the gasket down and that's it. Pretty much, unless the, the application calls for more or specific usage. around the edges. Assuming you can hear me over the lawnmower man. Vipe up the schmoo. I am the viper. I've come to wash and vipe the windows. I guess it doesn't matter if it sticks out around the outside, but all your, all your friends are going to be laying underneath this thing working on it out on the trail are going to notice. <coughs> Yuck. I still taste that bug I inhaled earlier. That's disgusting. I think it was a mosquito. I don't know. Whatever it was, I think it put out some nasty pheromones or something. Cause it, it, I got no sense of smell, so it's even worse. So I got more taste. My deers have been out here yet. I don't know. All right. Well, that's probably been long enough. It's got some condensation on it. I'm sitting out. But that'll be all right. Okay. Let's uh, glue the gasket on. Well, let's just attach the gasket to the transmission first. Let's go get a. Make sure I get the right socket because I lost one of my sockets in my big toolbox in the back of the truck. It bounced around and fell into the bottom of the toolbox where I couldn't find it. So I'm going to have to take everything out and reorganize it, which I need to do anyway. Alright. This should allegedly be it. No, it's not. So it's the one tweener size that I lost. Oh no, I lost another one too. That's nice. Oh, wait, is it this one? Because that'd be really cool if it was. No, it ain't. It's the tweener. Alright, I'll be back. Barring a half inch, I managed to find a 13 millimeter ski. So uh, all the comrades out there will be happy. That's your uh, Soviet measurements today. Alright, I'm going to restart the camera, and once I restart, we should be under the car. Okay, here we are, under the car. I'm going to get the bolt started here. Oh, I think I might have made the dipstick too, or the dipstick a little bit too long. Well, we'll have to maybe pull it up. Well, I can just push it up out from down here, can't I? Yeah, I'm going to be careful doing that, because I don't want to break my schmoo. I just want to get the pan on it. Oh, there we go. Alright, that'll do. Okay, where's the slope side of it here. That's over there. I think. Yeah. Alright, cool. That should do her. So we'll just kind of... Well, you know what? I'll shove this in between the car and the frame. And it's going to eliminate absolutely nothing that I want to light up. Good. Alright. I'll we'll put her down here. That'll work. Yeah, it's all kind of craps all over my hands anyway. Hit. Yeah. All right. That fits good. Let's uh, stick a bolt through her. Am 
on. It went through before and I go through again. There we go. Alright, I need some kind of jack or something to hold this pan up, which I don't have, or an assistant, which I also don't have. So we're just going to do it the hard way. I'd probably bend the pan in the process and ruin everything. Piss off Greta. Okay, it's sitting on something. Whatever it's sitting on, thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's on the drive thing. All right, drive hecky. Yeah, that's that's tech term for it. Heck of a jig. All right, you come up through there. Oops. Oh, that sounds nice and gritty. It's a nice dirty bolt. Good. Always make sure your bolts have plenty of sand in the threads. I wonder why the, end, the bottom of the engine looks wet. Oh, that's probably just from me cleaning the transmission out. It'll be all right. We'll live. Yeah, all right. Keep jamming these bolts in. Until the bolt jamming is done. I just noticed there's a bolt missing out of my front axle. I wonder if that's anything important. I'm guessing this front axle probably needs rebuilt by the fact that my back axle needed rebuilt. <laughs> um, I don't know how well this thing's going to spin going down the highway. I haven't really tested it very much. But uh, maybe I'll, before I make the electric drivetrain for it, I'll engage the axle just go and drive it around a little bit and uh, see if anything screwball happens. Preferably not. But I mean, all else fails, I can take the, the half shafts out of it and just let it spin on the bearings. I hear that's bad for it, too. I may end up just putting a solid axle under this, because this thing's a pain in the ass. They say they're not very strong, either. I want to I want to get something where I can put a locker or a posi on it. Because... Uh, once I've driven a locked rear end and a posi rear end, I don't want to go back to a regular open turd. The only way, you, these are eight and a quarter AAM front axle. The only way you can get these is uh, open. They don't make posies or lockers for them because apparently it'll just snap right in half. The case will just bust right in half if you try to put any amount of torque through it and it doesn't have any wheels to slip. That'll actually clear me out a bunch of room for some stuff, so maybe I'll just do that. I'll just plan on doing that instead of keeping this. Um, might have to lift it a little, a couple more inches to make that fit, but I'll bet you it'll be all right. I'll get a, an old leaf spring Dodge front axle for it. And... Uh,
Yeah, I don't mind having leaf springs in the front because it doesn't affect the handling that bad. I've driven stuff with leaf springs on all axles and I don't care. <laughs> this thing ain't going, well it's probably going on the tail of the dragon just to see how it does. It's, it's not going to do very well. But uh, just to run something weird up there. I like the tail of the dragon. It's a nice place except for I get motion sickness going around all the curves though. We got two more bolts. Where do those go? Probably one here. Yeah. There's one. in. There's the last hole. Good. All right, let's make sure in. You don't want to tighten them until you get all the bolts in because, you know. Shoot. Where'd you go? Yeah, there you are. Um, anyways, uh, if you start tightening them down before you have all the bolts in, then obviously the only thing that could possibly happen is the bolts will all go in. They will defy you to the best of their ability. How many Agadagas was that? I forget. get back here. Okay, what's up with that bolt? Obviously it's the one I can't see, so it'll be the one that screws me. Yeah. Oh. It kind of got knocked off to the side somehow. Well, at least we're still lined up with the threads, that's good. took the splash shield loose because I kept losing stuff on it so well, now I just pull it down and whatever stuff I lose on it falls off oh there we go duh shine the light on it maybe it'll be visible there we are whoops nope not good oh come on there stay
Gotcha, gotcha. I'm doing nothing like a proper torque sequence on these things. Um, oh well. Hopefully the glue I put on the bottom there will compensate for the over tightening or the under tightening. Or the bolts that I will never inevitably forget. <laughs> All right, that should do it. Yeah, that's it. It's all the bolts. Yeah. Whew. Now the paint is going to be putting the transmission fluid in it. Because I think I put that dipstick at a stupid angle. Yes, I did. I should have made it stick straight up. But I don't really have much of a way to do that. I think it'll work all right. I just have to be careful. Use good mechanical practice so it doesn't leak in the first place. I am greatly thankful for these LED work lights because I would have broken upteen thousand stupid incandescent bulbs by now. I guess that's it. Um, I got the dipstick tube shoved in there. Make sure it's shoved down good so it'll seat. Okay, well, that's it. Transmission's back together. If I can put some fluid in there once the, the schmoo all dries up and uh, Maybe shorten that dipstick just a hair. About probably an inch. At least I made it too long and not too short. It's, it, it's easier to shorten it than it is to lengthen it. And then uh, I got this new spigot here hooked up. I got to get an eighth inch uh, nipple thing for it. And I got to get some kind of a T for it because I got to hook it up to the one that's over here. And I got to make sure nobody ever opens that because that would be a problem. I think I'll put a higher pressure radiator cap in the lower radiator. And we'll put the lower pressure cap in the upper picky. And then, oh yeah, I need to get some inch and a, inch and a quarter through inch and three quarter uh, radiator hose clamps. But that's not too bad. I can go to oh 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 Riley's is, 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 and grab those. Pretty good when I know you by first name. Here. Not actually running a shop. <laughs> that's that's unusual. Yeah, well, for me it's not. All right. Well, that's good enough for now. Um, this will be hopefully the end of the transmission pan assessment videos. Whatnot. I'll see you later. <laughs>